YouTube, what is going on? Welcome back to Power Apps University. Today we have a really quick video walking through how to filter uh, lookup column values within Power Automate Actions for Dataverse. Um, so really quick, just want to walk you through kind of our demo today of how we're going to be setting this up. I've created a really simple kind of mock IT ticketing system, right? We just have a list of active tickets here. We have a ticket name and then we have a status. Um, so just to show you what this looks like in the back end, we just have this tickets table. Uh, with just a list of ticket names and then the only other column that we have is a lookup to a status table to see what type of status that ticket is currently in so the status table is just made up of three records complete in progress and received and what we're going to do is jump over to power automate to show you the syntax to set up some conditions on a power automate trigger this is also something that's going to work all over the place like in the list rows action so this should be pretty applicable uh, there's a lot of times when you're working with Dataverse projects, you're going to run into this, you're going to have a need. Uh, so kind of our example is we're going to show how we can set up a Power Automate flow that's going to trigger only when a ticket is going to be marked as complete. So if you want to send emails, if you want to trigger other actions once a ticket has been marked complete, uh, we're going to show you how to do that. So what we're going to start actually is we're going to come to our solution that the tables are in. We're going to create a new Cloudflow. We're going to select Automation, Cloudflow, and then Automated. And then for the name, we can say when a ticket is completed. And then the trigger we'll be using today is for Dataverse. So this is going to be when a row is added, modified, or deleted. So now that we are in our flow, we're going to set our change type to be modified. Table name we're going to say is tickets scope we're going to set to organization and now we are ready to continue so good practice is to only set the select columns that we're going to look for when changing so in this case what we're looking for on the tickets table is when the related lookup table to status changes that's the only time you want to fire this um, so what we need to do is go get the logical name anytime in flow when you're working with the filter rows or select columns it's always going to want the logical name of that column so we can hop over to the tickets table we can take a look at our status column click on edit column here and underneath advanced options we can see that uh, this is our logical name so we'll copy that go back to our flow and we can set that. So as it stands right now with how we have this configured, anytime the status column changes uh, in our tickets table, this flow is going to trigger. So again, if this was, we wanted to kick off another process, we want to send an email to uh, a customer that their ticket is complete, something along those lines, this flow would trigger. But what we're looking for is a specific status. So what we want to do again is start by using the logical name in this filter row section. And then how we want to format this is by putting an underscore at the beginning, an underscore at the end, and then typing the word value. So essentially what we're saying by this is within this CR314 underscore status column, we specifically just want the value, which is going to be the uh, record GUID associated with it. So we're just looking for this specific GUID. Um, and let's say, again, we want to use complete. What we can do is copy this GUID, go back to our flow, and we can say EQ uh, for equals and then another space and then we can paste that GUID. So in order to save this flow we need to add another step so we can just add a condition step uh, just to have something there just say when one is equal to one close that we can save this. So with our flow all saved we can go back and we can click on details to check flow runs um, and let's start by doing something that shouldn't trigger the flow so if we go back into our application uh, let's change this complete ticket, let's change the status column um, to received, and remember we're only looking for that complete, so now we've made this modification to this record, um, and if we come back to our flow, we can see that nothing's going on. So if we hop back over to our app and we can use this first ticket, uh, once we mark this as completed, you'll see that our flow successfully ran, um, so we'll change the status to complete, we'll click save, um, now that this record has been saved, we can hop back over to our flow, click on refresh, and we can see that we have a successful flow run here. So just a quick recap for this, when we want to specify some filtering conditions on the Dataverse trigger, or again, this is going to work uh, the same way in like list rows for Dataverse. So if you only want to list uh, certain rows within a table that have a certain value in that lookup column, all you want to do is make sure that you have the logical name of the lookup column 
in that table, and you want to add that underscore before, after, and then with a value, and then make it equal or not equal to whatever kind of OData filter query condition you need to set up uh, to that specific record GUID. So that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think below, um, what you want to see next, and we will see you in the next video.